The resolver consists of a stationary part called stator and a revolving part called rotor, which is attached to the motor shaft. The primary winding of the stator is connected to a high-frequency sign signal. This sign signal is transmitted to the rotor winding because the stator's primary winding and the rotor winding act together, like a transformer. Furthermore, we can name the rotor winding also as reference winding. The relative magnitudes of the sine and cosine voltage are measured to determine the angle of the rotor relative to the stator. To get an output signal, we have two secondary stator windings, a so-called sine and a cosine winding, which are displaced angularly to each other by 90 degrees. So, let's mount this resolver to the motor shaft and apply a high-frequency sine signal to the stator primary winding. The pulsating alternating magnetic field of the rotor winding now induces an alternating voltage in the measuring windings sine and cosine. Their amplitudes, however, depend on the angular position of the rotor. If the rotor winding and the measuring winding are parallel to one another, the magnetic rotor field completely passes through the measuring coil. Therefore, the induced voltage is maximum. And at zero degree shaft angle, the cosine wave also has its maximum. If the rotor winding and measuring winding are at a right angle to each other, no voltage is induced. Let's turn the motor shaft 90 degrees and we can prove all these statements. So, let's change the time base of our oscilloscope and watch the measuring signals. What you see now is that you get a modulated sine and a cosine measuring signal, which are also called envelope curve. It's now up to the Resolver Digital Converter, RDC, to evaluate the current rotor position and the rotational speed from these signal curves.